This video is going to be on replacing part number four here in the drawing for an MEP802 alpha. This diagram this diagrams from the Army Technical Manual 9-6. 115-641-24P. This is the depot level repair manual and page 63 of the PDF file. Uh, before you get started, you, sh you can look at this and reference part numbers. Um, as you can see, you can scroll down through this. There's a second page for fuel filters and things that are inside. And here's like all your part numbers and stuff. Like this is what the video is on right here. I'll show you the part numbers later on. First step will be to remove these 5 16 screws. The ones that I'm pointing to. And then along the bottom you have a half inch bolt and on the underside there's a half inch nut. Um, you can see there's a bunch missing because I already have had this off to do some work. Um, the entire filler neck, cap, auxiliary fuel line and stuff stays in place. Alright, I got all the hardware removed. And if you look at it, it's sort of slipped up underneath this bigger panel along the top. And then also at the bottom here. This one was a little damaged at the bottom already, but if you just kind of yank down, and it just pops out. Set it off to the side. These little screws right here that we're holding on the panel, and there's a whole bunch of them all over this generator. They're size 1032 by half inch long. If you were missing some or wanted to replace them, um, I got stainless ones, that's what was on there. I bought a whole bunch of these just to replace because a lot of them rattled out over the years. And whoever had worked on it in the past, as you can see up here, they actually used like some self-tapper screws that aren't quite the right thing. But uh, that was just an FYI. This is what you're gonna see when you take off that rear panel. This right here, ignore that I have these wires disconnected but this is your fuel level sending unit. This is what you're gonna replace. It's got five Phillips head screws. I recommend just to be make it easier. This is the fuel line that comes from your auxiliary pump, which is over here. All this is is use a crescent wrench and take it off. It also won't hurt to disconnect the fitting for your auxiliary pump and your low level shutoff as well as your auxiliary pump wires just to get them out of the way uh, just like the fuel line. These are lines I already had uh, disconnected for my fuel sender. Set this to the side. I'm going to draw a little line just so I can reference the pattern of the holes that faces directly towards the back of the tank. The holes only line up anyway, but it'll help. Your wires are going to be hooked up when you go to change this out or check it. Um, one wire just attaches to the screw. Uh, one of the five screws on the outside and there's another wire that's on these nuts. 
Um, so you're gonna remove those, and then I'm gonna use a stubby screwdriver to take all five of these Phillips screws out. Got all the screws out. Mine's not down that tight right now, but you'll probably, yours will be tight. Use a little screwdriver, break it free. Now, this is the part I'm not really gonna be able to show you too well because mine has nothing underneath of it. Uh, normally, the way that this looks, and this is gonna be a little tricky to show you recording, but as you can see, maybe, this bracket was broken. The first time I'd open this up to diagnose why my fuel gauge wasn't working is it looks like this. That's how it's supposed to hang. Mine was broke. I cut this wire because when I went to go pull this out of the top, the wire was dangling and this was stuck sideways. And then that hole's not very big, so I couldn't get my fingers in there. What I ended up needing to do was open this up, take the strainer out, and I was up to my elbow with my hand in the diesel and I was able to reach over and pull it out that way. Then the other thing that is missing on here and is probably still in this tank, I'm not gonna fish it out till it goes empty, is right here. See how I was able to move that? It's hard for me to show you with my fingers here, but this normally has a bar that goes out with a float and it goes up and down. So when it's up full, as the tank goes down, it goes down and with the wires hooked up, that gives you a level reading in your gauge. What I read on this from people with experience is when you go to disassemble this or reassemble it, is normally this bar, you can actually see the piece in there. What it did is it rotted and it broke. This is probably stored in a lot of fuel and the moisture uh, rotted it. Anywho, is off this little bar, then there's a Phillips screw, and then there's a rod. It's not gonna be that short or that long. On the new one, if this, if if you're replacing it, the new one's universal and it comes really long. You're gonna need to match it up. In my case, I can't match it up, but I have a different way of solving that problem. Um, but yeah, unfortunately I can't really show you the best way, but there's a little Phillips screw and then the biggest part of the bar comes out and then with these screws fastened all the way down, it's just big enough to pop out. Um, and then, you know, the unit will be one big piece. Also, you'll need to adjust your sending unit to the depth that this one is at as well as the bar length for the actual float. This is the replacement part that's just like that one. Auto meter, fuel level sender, model 3262. And it gives you your ohms range and it can be adjusted to fit any tank. And what that means is you can see how long this box is. That float is actually this long. So if you have a big old tank or if you got a teeny one, you just use something wire cutters probably work it's not very thick and you cut it to the length you need you attach it to that phillips now i don't have this box open because because i did some research and found this fuel sending unit as you can see it's a lot more simple um, than that one if you can imagine the big bar and having to adjust it and fit it in that little hole that's in there it's also very similar in construction um, I'm gonna have a different video on installing this, but this is your auxiliary pump on off and your low level shut off generator float switch. It, it works in the same manner. This is made by Wema, Wema, not sure how to say it, USA. Um, 240 to 30 ohms range. Uh, that's a standard fuel sending ohm range uh, for the United States. K-U-S, S-S-S, and this is the five and a half inch length, because in the instructions it says you should be about one inch when this sits on the tank from the bottom. 
and with my measuring it was about six and a half from the top of the flange so it's a five and a half inch so i'm fairly certain this is going to work it is not the way that this came or the way the military maintains it but it's going to do the job i think this is going to be a better solution uh, what i'm going to do to test it is i'm going to temporarily hook up these wire leads the way that they're supposed to be to the ones that i have taped off in here and i'm going to go to the gauge and see what it reads okay so i just have these little gator clip wires temporarily hooked up um, i believe it doesn't matter which way these are and i'm going to leave this upside down to show that it's full right now i'm going to go over to the control panel when i work on this i shove the emergency stop in so now when i put this see it did change so i'm gonna put that to off now i'm gonna flip this upside down not fully upside down let's put it half okay so that's in the middle simulating a half tank level now this is going to stay the same until you put power to it well it's shown three quarters um that makes sense if it was one inch off the bottom that is going to be three quarters so this is all the way down it should show around e and it is so this part does work it's not quite on e but that's good enough for me because if you figure you're at e it's an inch from the bottom cool now to install it all right the mark i made on the fuel sending unit i took out i matched the bolt pattern up and put a mark on the new one and what i did to make it easier is with the new gasket it's got teeny tiny little holes so it seals good around the screws is i put the screws in and i gave them a few turns to sort of bite into the gasket so it's held in place all at the same time that way you're not trying to fight it inside the teeny little working space and then trying to do this one-handed you have to hold this up a little bit because i notice it will bind going in just to get and your wire is going to be facing to the right as you look at it uh, again doing all this one-handed kind of sucks I'll show you what it looks like after i get it all the way in all right got it in and all five screws tightened down so then you're going to have the wire these are just open ends and then here's your two wires going in to the generator i got wire strippers crimpers and i'm going to use these butt connectors to connect it all right, did the splice, got my butt connector, so before I electrical tape it and finish up, I'm going to check one more time. Yeah, it's showing almost full, though I think it should be full. But... reason why it wasn't showing full is I don't have as much fuel in there as I thought, so it's probably right. So your last step from here is going to be to reverse everything. I'm going to electrical tape over this. I'm not going to put it in the video because if you've already gotten to this point, you'll know how to put it all back together. Um, also, I plan on switching this and I'm going to do a couple other things in here. 